So, before the game kicked off Saturday, Baylor and BYU at McLean Stadium, I was walking down the hall, and I heard J.J. Joe go through the keys of the game or whatever it was going to be. Forgot the segment, but that. And the one I think the first thing he may have said, and J.J.'s on with us now via the, the video link, was turnovers. And, J.J., I think it was the first offensive snap of the game. They're already down 7-0, and there's a turnover. And it's like, oh, my God, J.J. has got to be going, my goodness. Um, you played there. You have broadcast for them. It, it, do you want to just pull your hair out watching what the ups and downs of this team? Yeah, how are you guys doing? Uh, uh... You know, I mean, turnovers is a very generic one that you can use all the time, right? Hey, whoever sure. wins a turnover battle. But this BYU team specifically this year, um, uh, basically the Kansas State game was a turnover fest for them. And they feasted on teams. And and I just knew when you have a veteran team and then we have a team that needs some little momentum, that's our team, Baylor. We just we needed to find a way to be a plus one or plus two and to have that first offensive play, which I, I'll be honest, a great play by the BYU defensive lineman to get that tip, not only tip it, but to catch it, uh, it, it would just seem like deja vu, like uh, here we go, man. And uh, just it just started the thing out wrong. JJ, um, look, there's been a lot of noise around Dave Aranda anyway. I mean, no matter what you know has happened, but these last two weeks have certainly amplified that. And they keep kind of – having the same problems. Either they fall so far behind, they've got to play cardiac football to catch up, or they have a team dead to rights and can't put them in the ground. Um, that is the thing that has not changed. How do they get that to change? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. If I had to answer that, I'd, I'd go get on that staff. i tell you, at least sell it to them. But it's a tough one. You're dealing with 18 to 22-year-olds, man, and for some reason, you know, we have seen more slow, slow starts than we would want to see over the last couple of years. And and to see us go down 21 nothing in the beginning and not be able to respond until late. Um, I know that frustrates the fans and it, it frustrates everybody, I think, associated with the program. I think it frustrates the coaches as well. They're trying to look for the button. But, um, you know, I, I think what's missing, to be honest with you, is that I think I said it maybe last week is that. Uh, they're still looking for the who on this team. And and it's, you know, it's just part of it. it you know, I mean, part of the process. And um, I just think that this team right here has some solid players. They're much better players, I think, overall, whether they've developed or we brought new guys in than last year. But we're still not sure, man, who's our dude. And uh, Sawyer's playing well. I think uh, Matt Jones is playing well on the other side. Keaton Thomas is playing well on the other side. Um, but we don't have someone who's willing to take us there. And until you get, you know, until you get somebody who's on each side that says, hey, I'm going to take us there, uh, we may see more of this. So, JJ, oh, go, I'm sorry, Craig, go ahead. JJ, the run game is non-existent. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a total non-factor for the most part. I know part of that's the O-line, but it was interesting to hear Aranda say in the post game that some of that was also just the running backs themselves, like not hitting the hole hard enough or just effort on their part, which is also another layer of concern. But what do you see? With the run game, is it just doomed from the moment the ball is snapped? Is it some of what the backs are doing? Like, can you help us understand why it just seemingly is stuck in place? Yeah, man, I tell you, I tell you, Craig. I mean, that's that's one where um, I think it's a combination, right? As I watch it up front, you know, you know, against BYU, I figured we'd have to figure out another way, and I and coach started to do some of this really short stuff out wide. I think we got. Um, I think we got Bryson uh, one out wide. He went behind two two blockers, ways to find ways to run. I, I figured it'd be tough this week, so I'm not surprised this week that it was tough for us to get going. Um, but, you know, you know, to be able – we talked about it last time, to be able to close a game, you have to be able to run the ball. To be able to settle a game down, you have to be able to run the ball. And you see with us right now, the challenge since 21 is that we've struggled in both of those because since we can run the ball, we couldn't sell the game down uh, after it's been kind of getting away from us. So we need to, you know, kind of slow things down and we have a hard time closing it because we're not consistently running. And that's, you know, it's just a combination of sometimes, like you said, maybe we make a wrong cut or maybe that's just that one block that's missed. JJ, you had two players suspended. Um there was a lot of guys out, too, because of injuries. But 
you had two playmakers suspended and others right. that, you know, I, I'm i sorry, you played again. Uh, this is supposed to be a team with better leadership, and maybe they do have that. But is that, is that inexcusable? And was Baylor or Aranda too harsh when we're considering a couple of guys that were smoking pot? You know, I mean, you know, and, and Smoke, you guys are more privy to what, what it's about than I am, but – um, you know, um, it, it's tough. Cause I mean, you know, coach, coach has a standard and when you have a standard, um, the one thing you have to do is hold fast to that standard. I mean, you, you just, you just got to, if that's what he's had in place for the last, you know, since 20, since he got here, um, you hate to see it because I mean, you know, especially coming off of a terrible loss, the last thing you needed was, you know, to be missing those players. Now, if you would have told me we we're going to be missing, I started two corners. Uh, start, uh, you know, we knew Carmen Garmin was out because he was hurt. And I was, we, then we're going to miss Steve Linton. Then we're mm-hmm. going to miss Trigg. I would say we lose, we lose by two touchdowns. Um, but you know, I mean, I think he has to hold to the standard. And I think you know, from a leadership standpoint, that's what I'm talking about. Um, you know, and not just to go back to Gloria, but when I was when I played, you know, the first few years, you know, first years it was it was you know it was a Jay fan, Robert Blackman, Gary Joe Kenny. You know, and those guys led. We didn't win a lot, but you knew kind of they were the leaders. After that, it was a Santana Dotson. It was Big Cat Robin Jones. It was Monty Jones. It was John Turnpaul, Scott Barry. And those guys kind of ran it, right? And um, and and it's good to have the big guys running it because most guys aren't going to mess with them. And I think we're – this thing is too much – it has to – right now it feels, it feels like the coaches have to do too much. And I know that sounds strange. But but, you know, you got to have some players in there, man, that's, that's taking this thing by the head. And, you know, when we had those players, you, we could tell the difference. And now we don't we're trying to find them. And it's just still a little we just have a little gap right there right now. J.J. Um, Sawyer Robertson, though, continues to, you know, he shook off a bad first quarter and grew up. Do you see him uh, kind of taking the the reins completely as the starter, uh, not only now but into the future? I do, I do. I think you know Sawyer. Um, you know, after I saw him the first, the first, I thought the first time he played against Tarleton State when he came in and the way he sprayed the ball. Now that's that's garbage time, but I mean he was confident. He was sure where he was going with the ball. He was accurate, and I wanted to see him again against Utah. I thought we had opportunity to put him in, and we didn't get to see him. Uh, and I think now it's his it's his squad. I mean, you know, that game on Saturday, he had a tip ball for intercepting. That last one is just him trying to make a play. I'm not going to hold that against him. He's just trying to make a play at the end. It's just, what, third and 20 or second and 25. Uh, but he he he's proved, I think, that he's QB1. I think that uh, the depth chart was updated. Uh, and it's his team. Now, the, the, the thing for Sawyer now is he's, you know, he's been in college four years is uh, he has to go be the dude. He's got to get one of these games. I mean, kind of what, what solidifies, I mean, really solidifies you and makes people start looking at you is when you just have one of these games and then you go get it, meaning that, like, on Saturday he had a chance uh, to go get a game. I thought we had – I think we had three possessions, but we're down six. And we had to rely on him a lot. That's the way it is. That's where it's going to be right now. And he needed to get one of those in the end zone – and I think that would have changed the tide and really got our got us got us going. But uh, you know he's still trying to figure it out, and I think he'll get there. JJ, Caden Jenkins, Lorando Johnson. Now, granted, he got hurt right in the very beginning. Chateau Reed, Kendrick Simpkins, Garmin Randolph, Steve Linton, Jacquez Evans, Kelsey Johnson, Richard Reese. I mean, the the list of guys that did not play, or in the yeah. case of Lorando, played one play and were knocked out was pretty lengthy. I know a couple were suspension related and then the others were health related. That's a pretty big dose of of impactful players. Who do you think they missed the most on Saturday and who do they desperately need back uh coming up this weekend? Well, I think we miss Garmin Randolph the most, but he was hurt, right? I thought, thought Garmin has been playing really good football. I know we definitely missed Linton. I mean, I think Linton was huge uh for us. Um I think we it's hard to say, man, Craig, because I think we also missed Trig. We needed somebody to help control the middle of the field. And and, and Sawyer was throwing the ball really well. I thought I thought that would have really helped our passing game having a big body in Trig. So uh, you know for the guys who who didn't 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 live up to the standard man, you know, they they I mean you got to put your big boy pants on and take this one in the chin. You ought to be in front of a camera admitting what you did and you know saying hey it won't happen again. Uh, because ultimately, I think this game was lost really not on the guys that were hurt. 
I don't think it was lost just based on the the, the the guys we missed from from maybe you know them not living up to the standard that's set. So uh, I wish I could be more clear, but mm -hmm. I mean I think a combination of maybe even a couple of those guys. Not I, I thought we were we struggled early with the corners. I thought because we had two guys playing who hadn't played a lot, so we missed Caden and and and, Loran and Lorando snacks. But I think missing those other guys in the middle, like I mentioned, um, I think that really impacted us on Saturday. What is their identity? Yeah, I mean, I think if you ask me, and this is not being this is not being crass a little bit, but I think they're 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 a team of almost. And I've been on a couple of those teams, so trust me, I'm not I'm not knocking you. Uh, and 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 I've been on a, a few almost teams. Matter of fact, most of my teams I was on was a team of almost. We almost did this and. And only only people can change it is them. I mean, right now you they'll be one of the Baylor teams that was an almost. JJ Joe, former Baylor quarterback, Baylor Radio with us on 365 Sports. JJ, have you got to watch much of Iowa State? I know you've been to Ames before, so factoring that into what they face this weekend, uh, what are your thoughts uh, about the Bears and the Cyclones? Hey, it'll be another Big 12 game. I mean, like, like I, I feel like in all these games, I think we're what 13 point dogs, man. I think I looked at it. Um I yeah. I mean, I, I really I don't know what to expect, but I mean, because you never know. But I don't expect us to lose by two touchdowns. Iowa State's good. They play really good defense. I try to watch some of that that Houston game, uh, and Houston's just really struggling now. So I couldn't I couldn't stick in there. I had to flip over to one that was a little bit more competitive. But um, I, I think Iowa State they're gonna play they're gonna play traditional good you know si uh, Campbell type football. They're gonna be good defensively, you know, offensively. I think they're doing enough. They've shown they have that grit. To, to, to this this year now, it seems like they're winning those games. They beat Iowa early. So it's going to be a tough one. It's hard to get a win up there. It's going to be night. It's a night game. I don't know what the weather is yet, but um, it's another game that if we have all our guys, I would not be a surprise if we won the game. That's the funny thing. And I would not be surprised if we went down 21 to nothing and lost by seven. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's the strange thing. Because, I mean, but I, it would not shock me if we went to Iowa State and won. That's the weird thing. Yeah, you know, it's just they 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 tease you a little bit, and then they you can just go, my God, who, who are they? And and that was kind of a combination of the last couple of weeks. JJ, thank you very much. Good luck. Be careful in Ames. Have a great broadcast, and thanks for your time as always. Thank you, guys. That's JJ Joe with us on every other Monday. Ricky Thompson is every other Tuesday, and their thoughts based on the broadcast, former players, and where things are right now. By the way, the uh, – comment the thread we have phil bennett coming up around the corner the one about i'm tired of it 365 sports weighs in on the state of baylor football that segment is up in the forum section of sikkim 365.com yeah you're not going to hear me though like sit here and beg for this coach or that coach like i'm not going to do that i'm not begging for anybody to lose their job i think there's a lot of people that uh that do that and don't really think twice about it and and i understand that it's it's warranted there's a, there's a re reason to, to feel that way, but you're not going to catch me just outright like demanding a firing. I don't know about you guys, but that's just that's just not I mean, my style. No. Um, but do I think there's absolutely enough ammunition to go that direction if you so choose, and if that's the right direction to go? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is apathetic football, folks. Like, there's no everything that you get excited about gets extinguished almost immediately afterwards, right? Every time. You get pumped up for a big game, you're left disappointed. Every time you show up to McLean Stadium for a, a, a good opponent, you're disappointed. It's just it's been ongoing now for two years, and really longer than that, because the six and seven, they made a bowl game of that, but they had the six early on, and then all the seven were like mostly in the second half and started what's now become two and a half years, nearly three now, of almost nothing but losing, mm -hmm. except for Tarleton State except for Air Force, but they already got you the first time. Like, they helped contribute to this, so that, that was just payback because Air Force already embarrassed you. So, you know, the comeback versus uh, UCF. Like, how long are we going to hang on to that? The first year they're in the league and a team from the American? Yeah, you should beat them. The fact you had to come back for multiple touchdowns to win that game in Orlando, like, hey, that was cool, but the five more opportunities, like Colorado, BYU, that you've had to do similar – you haven't done it. Like, there's just nothing that's tangible with this team. You know, it's all hope and promise and what could be. But, like, at some point, it's got to be what it is. And what it's been for a really long time is just a bunch of 
pretty talented players and coaches who have not been able to find a way to show up to the big moments and have no idea either how to start games, finish games, or in the case of BYU, do either one of those. And it's just like, how long are we going to do this to where it's like, I love Dave Aranda. I think he can be a hell of a coach. I think he has been at times. But something's not working, man. And it can't always be like, well, we're young. So is everybody else at times. And that's up to you to go and figure out how to attack the transfer portal and address some of that. But, like, the thing that, that gets me is how is the offensive line this freaking bad, man? You have no chance. You have no run game. you got a quarterback that all he can do is run around and, and throw the football around because you have no ability to run the football outside of maybe a keeper here and there. But, like, so next year it's going to be better? Is that what we're saying? So next year, though, it's been two years, but next year the O-line's going to actually be able to, like, run block? Is that, is that what we're banking on? Because I'm just kind of tired of banking on things and just, okay, well, we'll just we'll hope that that's the case. Hope will carry you a long ways. It has for a while. Uh, I'm not going to be one of these guys. I've seen some people, Baylor fans, absolutely out of pocket, like, talking about players and stuff personally. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think that you uh, – should be thankful that burner accounts exist because a lot of y'all wouldn't be saying half the stuff that you're saying. Um, but at the same time, I understand the frustration. And I understand that in this world where players are getting paid, people feel like it's free game to just say whatever you have to say no matter what. And I don't know, man. It's, it's turned into a really ugly situation as a result of the losing, the, the hope, and the bubbles getting bursted over and over again. And then the fact that we are in this era where like, when things don't go right, people feel more entitled than ever to point – that out and to feel like they should have more of a say than they maybe had previously. Does that make sense? And so I just think it turns well, into more of a we're in a we're in a society where a lot of people quit. A lot of people blame everyone else. Um, and, and sometimes they push it off on other people. And yeah, I, I you, 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 but I just think like, it's getting like more personal than it, than oh, it has no. any reason well, to be. Media. Yeah. And, and I don't like that aspect of it. I don't think a lot of people would be saying what they say, if not for hiding behind a burner, but that's social media and that's life. But that is an element to this right now that is as hot and as toxic as it has been along with the losing, along with the. So what, so what are you selling us for a year from now? And so all of that together, all of those things, and probably another thing or two, another form, piece of the formula that I'm missing, has led to one big toxic batch of ugh surrounding Baylor football right uh, now. I and the only cure for it, the only antidote, is win. winning. Yep. And yep. they can't do that to save their life, especially against anybody that they shouldn't beat. I mean, when's the last time they beat somebody they weren't supposed to? Oklahoma... Probably that year in 2022. It's 2024, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, am I right? Yeah. They they won again. I there've been three they new won, iPhones. Since they won. Then. <laughs> there's been three new offensive coordinators yeah, practically yeah. since then, and DCs and every other coach. So it's like, yeah, no, it's it's a disaster. It's just it's just a mess, and I think they can dig themselves out of it. But I just at this point have no faith that they can actually go and do it. And, if and they were to the add the same amount of talent. From what last year to this year to next year from this year, could that matter? I don't know. I well, don't know because don't they could lose a half of it. Thing. I mean, it is on the offensive line. No, it's absolutely. It, yeah. But I don't think that they don't have the right defense. I think the defense has played well enough at times to win. I think the offense has played well enough times to win, but they cannot play complimentary football, and they either can't start, can't finish, or can't do either, and that was the case against and, BYU. And, and then again, uh, you mentioned this, and we got a break for Phil Bennett because he's on hold. 